Welcome to Happy Medium, a podcast where artists make art on the spot. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Happy Medium. And today our guest is Jamie. Yay. Jamie, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, I'm Jamie Dawson. I'm a spoken word artist and performer. Yay. So today we are doing, again, paint by numbers. We are doing um, this kind of fruit collage. We're working on the corners, the bottom right and the bottom left corners. What do you think about words is so attractive to you? Like what, do you feel like it's just like innate or is it, does it come from somewhere? Ooh, okay, that's a good question. I think that a certain part of it is innate Mm -hmm. because of the way that it's tied to expression. Like words are the way that we, you know, share and make meaning and try to take what's in our mind and like connect to somebody else. And I think that expression in general is unique to everybody. Yeah. Um, I think over time, you know, we standardize what's supposed to mean what, but at Mm -hmm. the end of the day, words are the catalyst and the the structure to just thought. You mentioned earlier when we spoke that you started doing art when it comes to words and poetry in fifth grade, but you didn't start to really share on your own until ninth grade. What happened then? Like what made you create that change and decide, okay, I'm ready to like really share my art. I don't know if I ever really hit the point where I'm like, I'm ready to share my art. Um, It was for me uh, always a lot of encouragement from Mm -hmm. like my peers and from my teachers. Whenever I got to the point of of sharing, it was because someone was like, yo, this that you've made is, is good. Like, I think everyone should hear it. So in ninth grade, there was this structured Um, event within the schools and it's called the poetry jam yeah and so with poetry jam everyone who wants to can come we do a workshop um, with a a local artist a local poet Mm. and we practice performing we free write some it's overall a really fun time yeah but then to cap off the fun time at the end there's a little bit of a competition Um, so we take either poetry that we made exactly that same day Uh or that we like practiced ahead of time and we read it and get judged and like that's that's the event so ninth grade you know I have my notebook all like my little poems in it I go to poetry jam this is really the first time that I understand that people can perform right like poetry Poetry, yeah and like really just get into it and so then I, I I went for it I read a poem as part of the jam in ninth grade for a lot from the encouragement of my teachers and from Mm -hmm. my peers and i got first place nice and i won wow since then really me and poetry and performing like this like we're going all the way yes that's so fun do you remember what you what you did like do you remember your poem at all or like what it was about yes i do remember it was a terrible poem Aww. It was great for an ninth grader, I guess. Right, yeah. I'm but sure it wasn't terrible. It was called TikTok. Ah, that's yeah. funny. Um, I, now. Now it's funny, yeah. <laughs> it's an actual app and everything. Yeah, but TikTok. Um, it was about like feeling like you're running out of time and like mm. having like pressure on you. Um, I just remember the last lines of that one. It was like... Um, it was like through an hourglass metaphor or something. Okay. You know? So it's like tick tock, tick tock, and like someone getting lost in things. But the last words were like, down, I fall down, and in sand, I drown. Ooh. And it was like, heavy. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> she hit that. That's awesome. Yeah. How many people were in the competition? Like, or it was just, was it just your school or was it like, the surrounding schools and they so do the poetry jam for it the day. starts out as one school every school has their poetry jam you know if they like to participate mm-hmm. um i think now the district is up to like 20 okay. high schools um and in my specific school that day it was maybe like 12 15 of us who like all shared something um the the main goal always is expression yeah to share yourself to you know, get comfortable, like use your voice because yeah. that definitely before then it's like, okay, you know, I say things, I write things, but uh, because there's adults that come to the space yeah. and like give feedback and things, you're like, oh man, it really means something. Something, yeah. To use your voice. It's nice that you had such, you know, 
positive encouragement too. It seems like your school and your teachers really encourage you to kind of lift your voice. Um, how important do you think that was in you being able to continue to grow in spoken word as you grew up? Absolutely, like a thousand Essential. percent. Yeah. <laughs> totally critical, totally critical. Because um, after you kind of get that start, it becomes about craft, yeah. you know, as well. Like getting better at something and to do that in a vacuum when poetry is so like human and expressive and we all have our different ways of saying life. Right. I don't think I could have gotten better in a vacuum. So you eventually began performing poetry. You joined a youth arts collective called Heard em Say. And then you found a college that also really encompassed all the art that you wanted to do, including spoken word and more. Can you explain that kind of experience and going to college and what that was like? Yes, okay, so the, the program that I joined, um, First Wave, was like the pillars of like arts, academics, and activism. So being an artist is, is great and fantastic, but also the emphasis on like what can we learn? What can mm -hmm. we explore? How can we grow? Um, I got to choose my own majors, so I chose psychology and mm -hmm. African American studies with an emphasis on the arts. But I chose that to also continue to help strengthen my lens with my art. Yeah. And then doing it all at the same time. So that part of the program in college was amazing. Just the different people I got to grow with and experience, um, international trips, studying abroad, but mm. people knowing that we're artists, so also creating a platform. Yeah. Um, so things like coffee shops in Denmark and you know presentations in in Brazil things that like I never wow. really imagined you know for myself yeah but college and being a part of something made it happen what, made it what school is this I feel like we need to we need to let people know in case yes. they want to look it up please it is the University of Wisconsin Madison okay yes it was good to have my art as an anchor throughout that time yeah. Because otherwise, you know, it could have been rough. So your journey has been colored by the talent of many black and brown artists. How do you think that has allowed you to flourish in your art and allowed you to feel like you can grow? Mm, representation definitely matters. Mm -hmm. Seeing artists who look like me speaking freely about um, what the culture means to them or has done to them, what their experiences were like, really empowered me to enter my take into the, yeah. the whole story and the whole fabric of yeah. what is a nuanced experience. Yeah. I love writing about Tampa and Florida and sunshine and waters and Florida water and making it this beautiful just sunset feeling mm -hmm. uh, throughout everything. If I could incorporate a little bit of like wind through the palm trees and just the cadence or the way that I say something, that's what I lean into. Mm. I 100% believe that experience influences your art, your environment. Yeah. Influences your art. Yeah, and what you create. Yes, and even topic. How do you find the right way to say certain words that really gets your point across? How do you guys learn that? Is that something you learn or is it kind of part of your own self. Oh gosh, yes, you absolutely learn it mm -hmm. and practice it. Um, what they taught me, and when I say they, I mean like heard them say, and the mm -hmm. mentors and the people who would come through and do workshops from all over the country. Every word is a world. Ah. Yes, our, our poet laureate here, Mr. James Tokley, that's his mantra. Every word is a world. Uh, what that means is we could live and sit inside of a single word because of its nuance, because of its meaning. We have mm -hmm. to take the time and chew and, you know, just put your mouth around yeah. it um, and know the intention that you have for that word. Yeah. To know the possibilities of that word and then to know what you want that word to be. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan too. Nonsense poetry mm. is, is a thing. Um, Jabberwocky. Uh-huh. You know, twas brillig and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the borgoves and the moan raths outgrabe. 
none of those are real words. Mm -hmm. That's expression. Mm -hmm. Like if the intention is there and you know, you, you're taking that leap, sometimes it, it comes out like nothing. A scream, a yell, a cry, a, a whelp. But all of that builds to mean something. Yeah, and if the intention's there, then people people can feel it. You know, they'll feel something, which is really, because I felt something and I didn't know what you were saying. But I was like, ooh, that's interesting. So you say you have a goal to, with your art, you know, create spaces that are real and really expressive. But in order to do that, you need to stay grounded in yourself. How do you, how do you keep yourself grounded, you know, every day so you can continue to do your work? Because, you know, there's so much going on in the world. It's hard to stay, you know, focused. Yes, focus is, is a great word. Um, there's a such thing as like a tune out to tune in. Mm -hmm. um, and that gives people permission to rest, to meditate, to paint, mm -hmm. to do something outside of the ordinary that goes against the, we have to do it, we have to fix everything now. Like, you know, go, go, go. So grounding to me looks like taking time to breathe, to rest, to recalibrate, to visualize, uh, to redefine. Because mm -hmm. sometimes your goals change. Sometimes you think of a brand new way to do something, but it's in that in-between space of living where we can make the most progress. Mm. That's very true. I'm grounding right now, because I'm like, what do I want to say next? But I'm gonna ground and, and think and wait. Yes, and there's no rush. Yeah. Basically, that's that's the whole thing. Understanding that, you know, there's no rush, and to trust yourself to do it in the way that's gonna be the best for you. Yeah, and creativity, like real creativity, can take time. And if you rush it, then you might not come up with an even better idea that you might have had if you allowed yourself the opportunity to wait and see what can come to you and try things. And I think that's kind of hard mm -hmm. for people and young people in general to do. There's always this kind of like rush all the time and that you need to like move quickly in life. And sometimes you do just need to like slow down so you can really see what's going on around you, you know? Yes, yeah. you said it. That's beautiful. Thank you. What is some advice that you would give to, you know, teens who were like you back in, you know, elementary or middle school who are getting into art, maybe it's spoken word or any kind of art, but they're not sure how to express that and how to start, how to start. What would you advise them? Ooh, I, I think that there's so many resources now mm -hmm. um, that maybe like I didn't have or know how to use, but kids these days know how to use it. They do. Man, like go like Google and TikTok and YouTube and Masterclass, like, Go, like, do that you to your heart's desire. It's so, like, low risk because right. all you have to do is, like, take the time and, and invest inside of yourself. Um, explore that curiosity. And even if you're not ready to share it with people or, you know, voice that to your parents, like, hey, I want to go take this class, like, you can start these little itty-bitty nuggets like, yeah. on your own and see how much you really do like it. Well, thank you for being on the podcast today. I appreciate it. Yours looks beautiful. It's starting to look like It's starting orange. to look like a little like, orange. Yeah. We're getting somewhere. But yeah, thank you guys for watching this, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you for listening to Happy Medium. You can find more info about the guests and other episodes in the show notes or go to our website, artsaccessflorida.org. Thank you to our sponsors, Community Foundation Tampa Bay, building a vibrant, prosperous community through transformative vision, leadership, and philanthropy at cftampabay.org, and the Gobioff Foundation, supporting human rights, organizations, and the Tampa, Florida arts community at gobioff-foundation.org. Lastly, thank you to PRX for consulting on this podcast the Arts Access Florida team, and the Florida Department of State, divisions of arts and culture for making these episodes possible. Copyright 2023, WUSF Public Media.